everyone, my name is Marissa. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, I'm gonna do a talk through video. I've been trying to satisfy YouTube metrics recently, which is like a whole long thing, but basically you wanna keep your videos down to like three to five minutes. But I also just really like talking to you. So um, I designed a video today, designed, it sounds so formal, but um, I'm basically gonna do a talk through, full face first impressions of wet and wild products. And um, yeah, there's some exceptions because I don't have like primer, I don't really have brow stuff, but uh, all the wet and wild stuff that I got, I'm gonna test it out and I'll let you know what I thought. This foundation has been literally raved about all over the internet by like luxury beauty bloggers and drugstore beauty bloggers alike. It's like $5.99 and it's supposed to be one of the best foundations out. So um, I'm gonna try it out. I have no idea which shade I am. I have two of them right here. I'm super pale right now. So maybe, let's give the let's give the darker one a test, let's see what happens. This is like aspirational foundation matching right now, but we'll see. Um, it comes with like a spatula because it is a full coverage foundation. It's a little bit thinner, but uh, I'm not obsessed with any type of spatula application. But you know what? I'm not using this on anybody else. So we're just gonna spackle it right on. Let's see. I have no idea how much of this I'm supposed to be using, but. Okay. So that's a really thin layer of coverage right now. And um, yeah, it's covered up most of the redness. I actually just got a facial today. So um, from the extractions, we've got a little bit of irritation here. So it hasn't really fully covered that. I don't expect any foundation to fully cover any blemishes because that's what concealer's for. But otherwise, it's a really nice even looking coverage. I'm actually really curious to see what this would look like with a brush. So let's try that. Drop some on the brush. Still not obsessed with this spatula situation, I'm not gonna lie. Let's go in the center of the face, see what happens. So maybe because it was a thinner consistency, it's soaked into the Beauty Blender more than it's actually um, applied. One of the things I really don't like about using a brush to apply foundation is streakiness. There's minimal streakiness right now. It's not bad. So this foundation is actually called the Photo Focus Foundation, and it's supposed to be um, good in all types of different lights. There's nine types of light, I do believe, seven lighting conditions, and you're never supposed to get any flashback. It's supposed to look beautiful on camera. Um, and right now, I think it looks pretty good. So the Photo Focus Foundation Collection also comes with concealer and a powder, and they're all supposed to do that thing. Seven different types of light, always supposed to be a perfect finish. So I'm gonna try this concealer. Touching up with the fingers and just dabbing it in, um, most if not all of blemishes here have been completely covered. Let's try using the sponge. Actually really nice. Okay, so the concealer has actually a bit of a thick consistency, more pigment, which is you know what a concealer should have in my opinion. Um, and it feels really, really nice and lightweight on the skin too. And I really like the way it covered under my eyes. I feel like there's a bit more of a reflection under my eyes, which is always what I'm going for when it comes to covering up dark circles. Okay, so before I go into powdering, um, I'm gonna contour, cream contour, with the dual-ended contour stick. You have this nice kind of ashy toned contour, and then on this side, um, a highlight stick, which looks very, very bright. So let's try out both. It's um, a little less ashy than it appears though in the actual tube. Like I thought this was gonna be a little bit more gray toned or at least taupey. And it's actually a little bit more red toned and warm than I would have liked. So now for the end of the trifecta of the Photo Focus line, I suppose. This is the pressed powder. And um, it, looked, it looks kind of baked actually. It's got like a domed appearance to it. 
But um, let's try this out. I'm very judgmental of pressed powders. Not gonna lie. Okay, I'm not too sure how much of this is coming off. God, if I would just stop dropping everything. I'm so clumsy. The thing I'm most concerned about with pressed powders is um, actually just setting everything down because I do love to bake very much because it sets everything down and you don't get any of that creasing under the eyes. But baking can make your under eye look so dehydrated so quickly, especially in the winter time. That's so not the look. That's like shooting yourself in the foot, you know what I'm saying? So let's see if this sets things down um, while looking still light on the skin. Now for a little bit of a confession. I've tried some of these products before. This one I've been using for so long, um, it had me shook when I first tried it. It's the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Precious Petals, and it is literally the truth. Um, it's like this soft peachy pink glow, and I'm just gonna show it to you guys. It's insane, like it's, it's really insane. Sorry, I just have to show you. Ready? I'm Um, hello? Like, that is the mic drop of highlighters. I've been dying to use this. I haven't used it yet, but I've been using it as the mirror because none of the Wet n Wild products have a mirror in them. The Alexis Ren ColourPop pressed powder. I have been living, breathing, dying for ColourPop news on when they're starting to make pressed powders because I know they can do it because they make it for Kylie and for however many other places um, and inexpensive compacts is such a good idea so I'm using my Tweezerman blush brush Let's see what this looks like first time using it Alexis Ren is a lot darker than me so that's a little bit dark but let's see what happens Okay, this, this powder is extremely pigmented. Not gonna lie, I'm gonna have to go in. This is a bronzer helmet, this is not good. <laughs> that is a pigmented powder. Moral of the story from this is that um, you need very little of it. Really consistent application though, as you can see. We just need to tone it the F down. Okay, and then they also have these Pout and Tell, I believe that they're kind of like tinted lip balms but they're a gel. So I'm gonna put a little bit on here. Also, um, I have tried this lip balm before. It does not give me the hydration that I expect from a lip balm, but I'm super into lip balms, to say the very least. Like I, I am very into lip balms and I need them to work like on a clinical level. So don't take that as like, this isn't a good lip balm. It's just more of like a light kiss of hydration, which is like not what I'm going for. It's also a really pretty, like, corally, light peach on the lips. I think it's really pretty. That highlight, though. Oh, God. Okay, so like I said, I don't really have anything in the way of brows that I can use in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Brows because I have been meaning to get around to using that. I'm going to do an entire full review video on that. So if you're interested in seeing it, click right there. But, yeah, let me go there. To that video and then come right back to this one okay we're back and this is editing marissa because for some reason most likely i just didn't hit record um i have no footage of me talking about this eyeshadow but this is the nude awakening eyeshadow palette um wet and wild eyeshadows were the first things i ever tried from the entire line and as you can see here excellent pigmentation no disappointment okay so the dark pigmented color worked really well i actually wasn't doing it so much that i went a little bit nuts with it but that's fine um, very little fallout for the amount of shadow that I was using. I was using it as a liner and there's very little fallout, which is really cool to see. One of the new products that they launched recently is the Lash Renegade Mascara. I'm obsessed with this like Superman Crystal of Destiny or whatever the hell it's called, Fortress of Solitude Crystal. You know those things that they put in and his dad talks to him? Um, Jor-El, my son, that, that, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm really into the packaging, but let's see how this mascara performs. I generally don't like mascaras with like this like bulb tip 
because I just think that it's unnecessary, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, immediately with the mascara, I can already tell um, there's no clumps when it comes to it. It's a very separating mascara. It's taking a while to build things up, but no clumps as I continue to build. I'm kind of sad this is coming to an end. I'm having a really good time playing with these products. They're very good so far. Um, so now we're on to the lips. We're almost done. I'm going to take a little bit of the gel lip liner in the shade um, Bear to Comment. And I actually... Bear to Comment? Oh, I guess like Dare to Comment, but it's like a bear nude. Um, this is a gel. I've never used a gel lip liner, so we'll see how it works. Okay, pretty good pigment so far for a gel. I also haven't mentioned, but all of these products are cruelty free. Um, I'm not completely cruelty free, unfortunately. But for those of you who are interested in it, it's always a bonus. Okay, so now on to liquid lipstick. I'm very judgmental of liquid lipsticks as well. This is the Liquid Cat Suit in the shade Rebel Rose. I wore this one on my Insta story, and a lot of people already knew what I was wearing, which is kind of interesting. So let's go for it. I really like the doe foot. It's got like a... Um, it looks like an actual doe foot. Like it's got a little bit of a scoop to it, which holds the product, and it's better for contouring the lip too. Okay, so that applied really evenly. It's a beautiful color. It's like a mauvey rose. So there you have it, you guys. That was my full face with what I've got from Wet n Wild. It's quite a bit of it. Um, top favorite stuff so far. This highlight is insane. Like, I am obsessed with it. Um, I'm about to film my favorites, and like I said, I've been using this for quite a while. It's going into the favorites bin. It's gonna be in the favorites video. The foundation, I was kind of unconvinced with it at first, but um, there's something about the way it heats up on your skin. Um, you can get so close up to my face right now, and it looks still so good. Sometimes something looks okay from afar. You come up close, you see patchiness, you see texture, um, you see pigmentation, you see things that you don't wanna see, basically. But this looks really, really good. Um, okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna do it, okay. Top four. I really liked this concealer. Also, excellent creaminess to it. Great pigmentation, blends well with your finger, with the sponge, um, I assume with a brush too. I didn't, I didn't use it with a brush. Um, and then, I like the powder. I feel like for touch-ups it would be really good. But you really have to dig into it to get enough powder for the type of, um, the type of setting that I like to do, if you know what I'm saying? But um, there's very little to no creasing under my eyes right now, which is fabulous. Okay, and then if I had to pick some things that were just okay, and I'm saying literally just okay, because they were fine, there's nothing that I'm like, ew, this is a terrible product, because to be honest, I've been blown away by this full face to first impressions. I'm taking way too long filming this. Um, I should be filming so many other videos, but I just had so much fun. It was like a pleasure to do my makeup today with these guys. Um, the Dua and a contour stick was fine, but like you guys saw me say, a little bit too red for me. I prefer more of an ashy contour, especially if we're talking in cream form. My least favorite product of the day is the Pout and Tell lip balm. I just didn't get it. For some people who want like a sheer kiss of color and a sheer amount of hydration, this might be perfect for you. It also smells like mangoes, which is heavenly, but uh, nowhere near the amount of hydration I expect from a lip balm that I love. And then lastly, if I have to pick, the mascara is not for me entirely because though it gives really great separation, it takes so long to build up to just this. And I ain't got the time, you know, to sit around and build. But if you like a really natural lash uh, with complete separation, absolutely no clumps, by all means, try this out. Also, you can be Superman in his Fortress of Solitude with this excellent packaging. There it is, my first impressions of Wet n Wild makeup with, I mean, like just a little bit of cheating with a highlight. I mean, that's the highlight that don't quit though. I enjoyed making this video out of all four of the videos I made today tremendously. Like, it was a pleasure to put on this makeup and congratulations to Wet n Wild for somehow managing to circumvent the system and make 
excellent makeup for an extremely affordable price point. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about first impression videos down in the comments below. If you like the video, don't forget to thumbs it up because it helps other people see the video and it helps me then bring better videos to you. And also, if you want to see more from me, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any more. I'll see you guys next time.